to go. Imagine a world where turbines no longer need blades. Imagine a world where the machines that power our cities, our industries, and our future move silently, driven not by steel wings, but by the invisible touch of air itself. It sounds like something from a sci-fi movie. A machine that spins without blades, that laughs at dust, debris, heat, and wear. A machine first imagined by Nikola Tesla over a century ago, and now reborn inside a quiet workshop by an engineer named Charlie. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss these mind-bending discoveries. In the world of engineering, turbines are everywhere. They generate our electricity, pump our water, and even help rockets leap into space. Every turbine you've ever seen, from the massive steam turbines inside power plants to the sleek jet engines that lift airplanes, has one thing in common, blades. But what if I told you that one of the world's greatest inventors tried to eliminate blades entirely? What if one day a turbine could spin using nothing but the natural stickiness of fluids? To understand why this idea was revolutionary, we need to step back in time, way back. Thousands of years ago, the earliest turbines were surprisingly simple. One of the first was the Heroes Turbine, built in the first century AD. It looked like a metal sphere with two tiny nozzles sticking out of its arms. Fire heated water inside the sphere, building pressure until the steam escaped through the nozzles, creating tiny reaction rockets that spun the sphere. It was primitive, weak, and totally impractical for generating real power, but it showed humanity its first glimpse of rotary power driven by fluid motion. Fast forward nearly 2,000 years. The Industrial Revolution arrives, bringing with it two giants of turbine engineering. First came Sir Charles Parsons, whose design used rows of moving and stationary blades working together to extract energy from steam. The smooth staged energy transfer allowed turbines to become efficient enough to power electrical grids. Then came Gustave de Laval, the mastermind behind the rocket nozzle that still launches spacecraft today. His turbines worked differently. Instead of gentle stages, de Laval's impulse turbines blasted high-speed steam directly onto blades smashing momentum into the rotor. Today, these two designs, reaction and impulse, make up almost every turbine on Earth. But in 1913, Nikola Tesla introduced something so bizarre, so different, that the scientific community didn't know what to make of it. The Tesla turbine, a turbine with no blades at all. Instead of aerodynamic wings, Tesla stacked thin metal disks, smooth, featureless disks, placed extremely close together. When high-speed gas or steam entered the turbine, it spiraled between these disks. Because fluids, even air, naturally cling to surfaces due to viscosity, the fluid dragged the disks with it, transferring its speed in a smooth, controlled motion. No turbulence, no blade erosion, no mechanical complexity, just pure physics. And yet, the world wasn't ready. Factories preferred blade turbines because they produced more torque. Engineers dismissed Tesla's idea as elegant but impractical. Slowly, the Tesla turbine faded into obscurity. Until now. Back in the present day, inside a small workshop, a physicist named Charlie is bringing this forgotten invention back to life and upgrading it for the modern world. Charlie didn't start with massive funding, a laboratory, or corporate backing. He started with curiosity and a belief that Tesla's vision wasn't a dead end, but an unfinished beginning. Standing beside one of his creations, Charlie reveals a turbine that looks nothing like the massive machines inside power plants. Instead, it's a compact assembly of dozens of lightweight aluminum disks, 75 in total, each separated by tiny stamped dimples that replace expensive spacers. The beauty of this design? The disks aren't rigidly connected, they are free to expand and contract with heat. The turbine doesn't care about impurities. It doesn't flinch at wet steam, dirt, or minerals. Where conventional turbines would erode and fail, the Tesla turbine glides through the challenge effortlessly. Charlie explains that unlike popular belief, the Tesla turbine isn't weak or lacking torque. At low RPM, when the fluid speed is highest relative to the disks, torque can actually skyrocket. This makes the turbine surprisingly strong during startup, 
where most turbines struggle. When Charlie hooks up his prototype to compressed air, just 20 to 40 psi, the results are astonishing. The turbine produces real electrical power, enough to light industrial grade lamps, enough to rival small generators. And this is only compressed air. With steam, the output could be dramatically higher. What makes Charlie's turbine even more impressive is its simplicity. The generator modules are brushless DC motors, the same kind used in hobby grade RC cars yet they can output thousands of watts when paired with the turbine's clean rotational power. Charlie's work evolved into a small company, Tester Energy, where he builds and sells Tesla turbine units to engineers, hobbyists, and experimenters around the world. A complete micro-steam power plant, compact enough to fit on a stainless steel table, clean enough to run on geothermal steam, durable enough to survive debris, sand, or rocks, and revolutionary enough that even Nikola Tesla on his deathbed declared this turbine his favorite invention of all time. The story doesn't end with Charlie. This is how new technology grows, not from enormous institutions, but from passionate makers and garages, sharing knowledge, helping each other, and pushing boundaries, just like Tesla did, just like Charlie does today. If you're inspired by innovations like this one, make sure to subscribe so you never miss discoveries like these. If you enjoyed this cinematic deep dive into the Tesla turbine and the rebirth of a forgotten invention, make sure to subscribe for more documentary-style explorations. Your support helps bring more groundbreaking stories to life. Thanks for watching.